In this video, we're gonna take a look at reverse engineering this pump housing. And in the previous video where we reverse engineered the cover to this housing, we went into a lot of details uh, explaining the thoughts and concepts uh, that we're looking at for reverse engineering uh, mechanical parts like this. And for this video, we're actually going to uh, breeze through the things that we have previously covered. Uh, so for with the cover of the pump housing, we went through step by step every single process that we used for uh, building out our sketches and creating our extrusions. So for this video, what we're going to do is speed up those portions and explain more of the details when it comes to a part like this. So when we're looking at the design process on the housing of this pump, you can see we can just use the same sort of core concepts of building out cross sections and mesh the surface uh, using our fit sketch entities to build out those particular feature locations and then uh, go ahead and extrude out our solid body. So we started with the uh, easiest part of this pump housing first, which is that main core section. And then from there, we can just simply come in and build out a reference plane off of the bottom surface of that housing to build out our secondary feature. So what I like to do in these concepts is uh, really just build out the easiest parts first, try and build out the basic structure of the part. And then from there, we can start to determine where we need to make uh, adjustments to our part. So we built out our secondary extrusion from the uh, main core of this pump housing to this small uh, slot shape object. And from there, we're gonna just build out another cross section and just continue stacking up our parts. However, there is one core detail in this particular portion uh, that is uh, something to keep in mind when we're trying to build out uh, nice, clean, accurate models that we can uh, come back and edit later. So for this sketch, we can see we have two overlapping circles where we're going to want to find the center point of our previous sketch and use that as the same center point for our second circle. So if we need to do any adjustments later on, uh, we have all that locked in place and it's also just going to give us a much cleaner looking part. So I'll pull out that rough cross section. We can see that we're uh, have a little bit of a difference in the part here from the casting to what would actually be tangent. So we're just going to leave the part as is for that. And then when we come to the top extruded portion of this object, we'll notice uh, there is a difference between the top surface and uh, the uh, regular just straight extrude uh, by the angle that's referenced to the very top portion of our pump. So we can see that there's a slight angle there and we're just gonna create a plane there and use that plane uh, to offset our extrusion too. So we simply did that just like we did in the previous video, uh, using mesh to surface to find the position of that plane, uh, build out a reference plane, and then snap that part directly to that plane. So from there, we'll just come in and we'll offset that plane slightly so that we get it down to the exact place that we want and now that we have our offset set up exactly where we want it, we can go ahead and build that part out. And that sets us up perfectly for our last sketch for the bottom portion of this part, which is going to be that mounting flange. So we'll just build out a, another cross section here. We'll go ahead and start uh, replicating that part as is, just like we've seen a few times before here in this process where we're just creating a cross section, building out the basic reference geometry, and then trimming all that together until we have a nice clean part. So for this portion, we're just gonna go ahead and extrude that down to that flange position. And then once we have all of these bottom sections built out, now we've got a boss that's kind of sitting there right on the top of the part. And for this one, we're actually going to just draft this up. Uh, so this is one of those few times here in this part that we're actually going to be doing a draft on an extrusion. 
and uh, for this draft, we're actually going to have to do a few things to tie that into the remainder of the part, which we'll see here just in a few minutes. Uh, but we'll go ahead and extrude that out. Uh, we're identifying our draft angle just from the correlation of the mesh geometry right now at a visual level. So from a visual le level, what I mean is we're simply just looking at the part, seeing how everything ties in, and then we'll use our compare tool here in a few moments making sure that all of that is accurate to where it should be on our part. So from here, we're going to go ahead and start tackling the uh, next tricky portion of our object, which is going to be that extruded shape there uh, we're seeing on screen. So we just build out a reference plane that matches that angle. And then from there, we'll go ahead and build a cross section. For this cross section, we're really trying to uh, not go too deep in, into the part, but just a couple of millimeters or about a quarter inch or so into the surface of the part is where we're building out our cross section so we can build out that extrude and extrude it. And then from there, we'll just go ahead and continue working through uh, the sketches of our part. We're going to go ahead and build out our outside uh, flange for the top portion of this pump. And then once we have that ge geometry built out, we can uh, start tackling the uh, interior portions of our pump. So now we've got that basic shape. We can go ahead and start sketching on that same surface that we built. And we'll just uh, use our standard mesh to surface and SOLIDWORKS sketch tools to get an accurate idea of where all of these surfaces should be. And we'll go ahead and cut our extrusion down to the bottom surface of our part. And once we do our basic extrusion, we'll rotate the part over and we'll notice we want this to be a very precise extrusion to the bottom surface. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to repeat the same process that we've seen a couple of times here where we'll use our mesh selection tool to find where that plane is. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and create a, another reference plane at the bottom of the part, which we will uh, go back and extrude that cut down to. Again, making sure when we do that, we're going to uh, take our top surface plane and make that accurately to the plane that we created so everything's nice and parallel. So now we've got that portion taken care of. Uh, we can move on to uh, some of the other segments of our part. We notice we've got some gaps where we built out our core structure that we just need to go ahead and fill in uh, from a structural standpoint on the outside of our part. So to do that, I'll pick a sketch plane and we'll go ahead and sketch that uh, area in and we'll go ahead and just simply build out a box extrude that into our part. We can merge that in as a solid body and create the rough structure of what our part needs to be. So one of the core concepts that we want to keep in mind with this is, you know, with this particular part, it wasn't necessarily designed in CAD originally. Uh, so in order to build this in as a CAD object, what we want to do is we kind of want to start figuring out whatever the best practice would be for building out these solid shapes, uh, extruding those solid shapes in. You can see we put a draft into that body that we just created, and we're just visually going around our part a little bit and making sure that everything's exactly where we want it to be. Uh, we notice we've got a secondary little nub here that we want to go ahead and make sure we clean up. So we've got a few different options inside of SOLIDWORKS to do this sort of thing. Um, we can either just go back to our original sketch, change the sketch plane, uh, or for this part, because that particular location is not uh, structurally necessary, we'll just go ahead and fill that in with some fillets or a chamfer here in just a couple of moments. So now that we've got pretty much the entirety of the external surfaces completed, we'll go ahead and uh, start extruding out a few of our remaining hole locations. So we'll grab these two holes here. We're going to go ahead and just throw them into place. Again, uh, we're not spending too much time on the specifics of our parts. We'll go ahead and dimension out the sizes 
Uh, however, we won't worry about too much as far as where the fitment of those two holes need to line up currently, uh, but rather we'll take care of that more in the assembly portion of this video series. So from here, we'll just finish getting this last remaining hole on the bottom of our part. And then once that's done, uh, we notice we've got one tricky uh, little hole here that we need to figure out that's at an angle. Before we get to the point where we're gonna go ahead and build out that hole location, uh, we'll first just take a look at our comparison tools and see how everything lines up. So we're gonna turn on our 3D compare and look at any portions of our part that we may need to go back into adjust, uh, anywhere that we may be missing some data. And we're gonna go ahead and just fill all that in, really start refining our part a little bit further and further. So as we build out more structures on our part, we can continue to refine various aspects of that part more and more in order to have our entire 3D object generated out the way that we want it. So we'll just refine that process down, uh, taking a look at our various surfaces, our various angles. We notice that we're missing a fairly large rib section here. So we'll go ahead and just fill that in really quick. And now once we have all of the externals pretty much where we want them to be, we can go ahead and go back to that center axis that we wanted to cut out. So in order to build out this center axis, what we're gonna do is we're simply going to highlight as much of the cylinder from the top and the bottom positions as we can. And once we do that, we go ahead and find where our central axis should be moving through our part. And with that, we'll just go ahead and create it as a solid. Uh, that way we don't have to build out a sketch plane or anything like that. And then we can simply just trim that solid surface out of our part. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to go ahead and just extend it out. Uh, one of the really nice handy features of mesh to surface is it builds out our solid objects as sketches. So if we need to change the diameter or the length, we can very easily do that. And now that we have that body uh, made just a little bit longer, we can go ahead and extrude it from our surface as a cut as opposed to an extrusion, a solid extrusion. And at this point, we can simply just finish a few more of the small details, building out this little uh, uh, cutaway here inside of our flange surface. And cleaning all of that up to be able to extrude it out. Then just extruding that solid body down to where we need it. Or that solid cut, rather. And then we've completed the bottom portion of our part. So we can go back up to the top and see if we're missing anything. We can see that there's a little shelf there that we need to go ahead and build out. So we'll go ahead and just go back to our sketch tools and we'll sketch that portion of our part out, making sure that everything's nice and clean and accurate to where it should be. And then we can go ahead and just use that profile there to cut away that surface down to the depth that we need it. And once we have all of that taken care of, uh, now we can go ahead and simply clean the part up by filling out all of the various aspects of our part that we want to fill it and make look nice and clean. And that's really the basic construction process. So what you're seeing here is about an hour and a half work of, worth of work that was consolidated down into about 15 minutes. So in the next video, we'll go into our more simple parts and then start working on uh, taking a look at some of the assemblies.